Yeah. You have a new drummer currently, um, a guy who's much younger than you guys. I've, I've never really heard of him. I don't know his background, but from what I've under, from what I understand, he's kind of brought some new life to you guys. And the one thing I will say about you guys have had some amazing drummers over the years, just incredible, the best of the best. But the, the catch is always that those guys can't necessarily stick around long-term because they have other commitments. Um, so maybe tell me if I'm correct here, does the new guy not only bring some great skill to the, to the, to the throne, but is there some chance that he may provide some stability because he's got, you know, he's not going to get the phone call from Slayer or, you know, or white zombie or Rob zombie or test or the cult or whoever. <laughs> well, we never know, but you know, we joke like, okay, you got to at least stay in the band 10 more years, you know, <laughs> I'm 62 <laughs> now. It's okay. Okay. If, if I get 72 and I'm still rocking like this, that, I'm, I'll take it, you know? So we joke about that, but he just turned 25, not too long ago. He's a young youngster, but he graduated from the Sc B Berkeley school of music. Very smart kid. Very, uh, we, we're in the studio now recording. I didn't realize how technical he was with pro tools and everything. And, and, and he's he's probably one of the top drummers we've ever had and he's he's young but he's an old soul um and when we found him because we knew gene was leaving that we started getting audition uh videos and we really liked his playing but we couldn't see his face he just played with his hair in his face and down so we thought you know maybe he's our age you know or close to it <laughs> and um lombardo couldn't uh Phil, well, Lombardo ended up being back in the band and then he couldn't do a tour. So we said, let's call Chris, see if he can fill in. Maybe it's a good chance to kind of jam with this, this guy. And we came out, we're like, wait, you're what? 25 or 24 at the time? We're like, okay, but his playing, we couldn't deny it. He was just an amazing drummer and he doesn't act 20, his age. He, he's, an, he's an old soul, but he's really... Um, stepped it up for because eric's the main songwriter and he really pushed eric and eric really asked a lot from drummers so i think just because it, chris was such an amazing drummer the songs that we wrote for this new record i think a lot of newer younger bands are doing some great things with some real fast and brutal stuff chris is bringing that to testament a little bit now and it's like it's kind of like a full circle where we're, we started somewhere and here we are today, kind of creating even stuff that people would think is current today and 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 uh, holding up with like the, the bands that are, you know, doing very well, these new bands that are coming up. So it's exciting, it's great. And we kind of, you know, me and Eric were joking the other day, we we're like going, did you ever think, you know, 62, you're gonna be thrashing this hard and singing that heavy? I'm like. Not at all, you know, <laughs> yeah. but here we are and we're doing it and we're enjoying it. And again, it's just enjoying the moment, man. Do we have a timeline for the new album? We hope to get to get it all recorded by the end. Well, we leave June 11th or July 11th for Europe. So we hopefully to get everything in the can. And then we have some breaks between tours. If anything we need to do at that time, we'll finish up. But it all falls on the label scheduling slots the guy who's going to mix it where when they're open so we're not a rush you know um the label's not pressuring us they're just like hey when it's done and it's ready we'll we'll, we'll get, get it going yeah but we want to get it going because you know we've been we decided to release our last record right when the pandemic started and i don't know if it's the best decision we thought well people are at home maybe they sit home and play it all day you know but we didn't think it was going to last that long. And two years later, we're like, holy, we're still not on tour, you know? And yeah. and now we're touring a two-year-old record, you know? Yeah. So we had a few years out of that to tour on. And then now it's like, it, it's time for some new music. That should happen to a lot of people. You know, yeah. they got this record and they got to sit on it or roll the dice and just put it out, see what happens. Um, yeah. Thank God that everybody who had a record sitting there loaded in the chamber and then the world shut down i'm extremely happy that everyone most everyone said fuck it 
and just put it out there so everyone would feel alive at least audibly, you know, and be able to press play on something. Um, I think record sales went up. I think uh, radio, heavy radio was doing really well. I think people <clears throat> still got paid because it was extra, <clears throat> you know, airplay and sales. People's catalog was selling be because of the lack of touring, I think. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that pandemic really switched from physical vinyl or CDs to digital. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a it's a digital, you know, thing. And, and, you know, unfortunately for us, like our Atlantic contract, which they still have, we didn't even talk about online sales or digital uh, back then when we cut these contracts. So our right. digital digital roll rates were, were terrible, yeah. you know, awful, you know. So now today, giving them to Nuclear Blast, we're, we're, we're doing well with the digital and digitals is just taken off. I mean, our label just, I don't use Spotify and I do now, but I did it and our label came up to us and said, you know, the digitals are doing great. Do you realize what you do on Spotify? I said, I have no idea. So he pulled it up and I didn't realize we have like one of the most 3 million listeners a month. And I was like, wow, that's, that's crazy. And he said, here, now Google this band or put this band up, put this band up. And I'm like, wow, we're actually doing very well digitally. So it really opened my eyes that it was a whole different thing, but those things like that tools help us put together the best set list because we see what people are downloading. We see what they want. And so we're trying to give them what they want. Yeah. You have a tour coming up. Uh, I think it kicks off in North America in September uh, with Creator and Possessed. And that's an yeah. awesome bill right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I understand that you're focusing on the the remastered first two albums. So it's going to be sort of an old school set of Testament tunes, uh, which yeah, sounds it, it, awesome. It, it is. It's We're going to be doing that from now until the end of the year on all the tours we have we have we leave and we do europe and we have some behemoth shows this summer but we're doing a combination of the legacy new order songs that just that set we come home do the creator possessed tour same thing and then we go back to europe with creator and anthrax at the end of the year same same set so it's just it's going to be fun because those songs we don't really need to rehearse for those. You know, we just did Milwaukee metal fest. We like, guys, you got to want to practice. Like why we know those. And, you know, I didn't need the teleprompter or anything like for the sets when I put them together. Cause so many songs I haven't remembered and, and played. I have to study them and get them back in my brain for about a week. But those ones, they just come back like that. You know, all of us just, they're, they're right there. And when we did the set, we're like, sounds like we've been playing these like, a while like we're on tour so we know it's it's fun to play it brings back great memories and you know that that's the songs we really spent a lot of time at the beginning just woodshed them and make sure they're right so that that's a good representation of who we are for sure yeah. well when you're young too and that's your young material i mean did you guys practice multiple days every you know every week did you have like did you practice like three or four days a week because i know i did when i was that age it's like my whole reason for living was going just going and hanging out with my guys and rehearsing the songs over and over and like three four days a week yeah we probably did you know probably five or six because wow you know i came into the band i was, I was like 23 and the other guys weren't even 21 yet so we were all living at our parents' house and everybody yeah. wanted to get out of the house and no better place to go to the studio. And they know Chuck's going to buy beer and there's going to be beer there and they're all <laughs> going to be drinking underage and smoking weed and, and making music and doing what they loved. So there, it, that was the best reason to get out of there and let's just go to the studio and hang out and jam and, and just drink all day and, and party. That That's what it was all about, you know? And And by that, we really put in our time you know, fine tuning these songs. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. 